Okay, um, helping others without getting, you know, getting hooked in to the drama. Um, now, this is just my, my views on it. And I think other people can have equally valid views. I mean, I, I te you know, first of all, you know, I, I kind of intuitively think of Mother Teresa. And this thing of getting, wallowing in other people's suffering and getting hooked into other people's suffering and, then, and, you, and you also going into a low vibration state, uh, for me, is unhelpful. I mean, it's just like you're crying and I'm going to cry. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so it's like <laughs> so I'm showing my solidarity with your suffering, and I'm going to try and suffer along with you. I just don't think that pers my personal view is that's not the high vibration thing to do. I think you know there's this thing of like I I always like imagine Mother Teresa helping all those lepers, <coughs> but staying in this very high vibration, unconditional love, which is a state of power. You know, the, the, you know, the leper's dying, this one's not got a foot, that one's missing an eye. And yet she can non-stop go through the day maintaining this level of infinite love and power. You know, not getting, and I think if you got hooked into the drama, uh, or she sees Christ in everyone as well, but if you got hooked into the drama and the suffering, you'd lose that connection. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd have to take like half an hour between each leper to mm -hmm. just try and recover your connection because you've got so enmeshed into the duality and the suffering. Mm -hmm. You know, to see Christ is to give you infinite power. Mm -hmm. You know, to stay in a state of detached, unconditional mm -hmm. love is infinite power. You can carry on working without being hooked down into, into those lower vibrations. It might seem cold. I mean, I think Hawkins was hilarious. You know, Hawkins and my other teacher were hilarious because they'd often, people would come with their dramas, they say, they feel like running into the toilet and laughing. You know, they'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> be like, it's like the end. Of, it's the end of the world, you know. My my partner's left me, yeah. you know, and they're crying and they're sobbing like it's the end of the world. And they want sympathy from the spiritual yeah. teacher. Well, the, the spiritual worst thing is, you can feel like that. Yes. You can feel like the end of the world, like depending it on how like spiritually aware or conscious you are or not. I guess. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. So, um, and you'll hear them. And then I have to crack up as well because I get the place they're in and witnessing the drama of people and, you know, the end of the world of people. Mm -hmm. And I remember Hawkins saying he just tries to <laughs> maintain a civilised face so as not to offend them. And I think that's quite kind of like, I, I get it, you know. Um, so just witnessing the drama from a certain infinite state mm -hmm. and how people suffer so much is quite comical at a certain level. I mean, I went to him and I, I told him, like, you know, I've got kidney failure, you know, I feel like dying and everything. And he started, you know, I was, ended up with giggles at the end of that because he's saying, you know, like, just do this stuff and if, if you leave the body, I'll meet you on the other side. And he was like, mm -hmm. and I laughed with him because I just saw I was just so heavily invested in my drama. You know, physical illness, death, kidney failure, like, I want you to understand my suffering. And he was like, like funny and hilarious. And I found it because I got his energy from where he was. It's like, you're hooked you're hooked into the drama so severely. And everything he said, like all my illnesses left, because I, I knew he had, he had transcended 23 illnesses. He was no longer invested in the suffering of the collective belief systems of, this is my illness, this is my label. Oh, how I suffer, like you should suffer with me, because let me tell you my sob story of how bad it is. So, you know, total freedom from that. And because he had hate transcended his illnesses, I felt the freedom of that, and I knew he was telling the truth. I could laugh at my own stuff. And then he said to you, didn't he? He said, I don't know, you've got kidney failure. How did I miss that one? <laughs> yeah, he did. That's what he said. He did, yeah. he did. What did he say? He, he, said, he, said, he said, yeah, we are on camera. <laughs> he said, um, so I told him my list of illnesses. So he said he didn't get kidney, he had gout. That was, I'll just quickly share it, even though we're bypassing a little bit the subject, of which I've forgotten even what I'm talking about. But anyway, <laughs> so... Um, so the, I had gout, and I went to meet Hawkins, and he had gout as well. Mm -hmm. So we, we shared the same illness. He transcended gout. I remember when I, you know, my main thing was to like shake his hands as much. That was my mission, was to shake his hands as many, <laughs> as many times to get the transmission of the guru. You know, I, like if you could transcend a death, transcended your ego, transcended 23 illnesses, I want what you've got. I'm going to shake your hands as much as I possibly can. And, <laughs> and um, so I did manage to. That's another story anyway. 
So, um, but the first time I shook his hands, I felt a tingling in my toes. This is true. I felt a tingling in my toes. It's like he had transcended the illusion of gout. And there's something, I'll, I'll explain this for anyone who's got an illness or anything, like there's a message in everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and he said to me, oh, I did that, I got the message. He said, pray for forgiveness for the one in me who caused pain to others in this lifetime and other lifetimes. Mm -hmm. So symbolically, the thing, okay, this is quite interesting for people who got suffering with illnesses. You know, gout is very painful. But, you know, unconsciously, I'd caused a lot of pain in all my lifetimes to other people. Mm -hmm. In just my presence, like people would be in agony just to know me. <laughs> So, so it's like, I was inflicting this, I was inflicting, I might still be doing it, but carry on. So I was inflicting this pain and creating it's pain wherever I was. It's carrying on this life. It's carrying on this life. It probably is. So I have to cancel that one. Right? Anyway, yeah. so, 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 you know, so pray for forgiveness for the one in you who inflicts pain on others, in this mm. life to others. So there's a message sometimes, you know. Sometimes you can just cancel it and sometimes you need to pray mm. for forgiveness. Mm. You know, I've got kidney failure and I, I intuited that, you know, kidney failure is like toxic blood. You mm. feel like you're, you're not urinating enough and you, your poisons are building up. It's like I'm being poisoned. So I intuitively prayed, I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's created toxicity in other people's lifetimes. Mm. In, the, in this lifetime and others, you know, Oh, Sabir's so coming in the room, it's going to be toxic for a while, so it's a bit like that. So uh, the guilt of that, mm -hmm. and then getting a belief which represents that can punish me for what I've inflicted on others, I just pick up the illness, you see. Mm -hmm. So um, through the cancelling beliefs and what's, what have I inflicted on other people, and I, just, I can intuitively get it, like how do I feel? Do I feel like I've got toxic blood? Do I feel like I've got pain? Mm -hmm. These are the things that, have been, you know, uh, been, uh, that I'm feeling. And I'm experiencing that out, my guilt for having inflicted that on, on my fellow human beings. So, um, so the message and the cancelling of beliefs. Um, and, oh yes, sorry, detachment. Yeah, I do yeah. remember the so story. I'm going to interrupt yeah, sure. and add a little bit into sure. that. So, yeah. the, so the general narrative is, you come to me, you've got a kidney problem, say. Yeah. And I'm like, I've got exactly the same problem. Let's join a Facebook group together and we're, we'll, <laughs> we'll battle out this problem. Or we'll start a forum. We'll start our own kidney failure forum. <laughs> and, then, and I'm going to write to the local papers about kidney failure. And then the, then the politician will pick up and it goes, and, and they bring it up in Parliament because why is kidney failure not being dealt with in this country? This is atrocious. <laughs> and so then it's on the news. And everybody's, and then you've got the spiritual person who goes, I'm not buying it's this shit, it's a load of nonsense. I'm just going to get spiritual and pray. And then the narrative becomes, that guy over there being all spiritual, what a narcissist, he's got no empathy, he's just in his like ivory tower being all superior and holy. How's that going to solve anything? And so what I think a little bit is trying to resolve mm -hmm. the opposing narrative and addressing that from a point of sensitivity where you can, almost, you can say that, well, it's not really a complete lack of empathy. It's just seeing it from another level of consciousness that, yeah. say, by this time next year, it won't be kidney failure, it'll, because, you're, because you're a person who invests in drama, by this time next year, it won't be kidney failure, it'll be parking tickets, you know, it's this, or, or whatever, you know, and that's the, it's the dealing with the narrative of life from the point of the earthly perspective, and the way that the spiritual perspective can often be received as, as being like, out, out in the cloud somewhere, you know? Well, I think, you know, it, well, that's, that's, a, that's the thing of an intuitive thing. With You've got to be able to uh, intuitively know who you're talking to. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's a few things. I mean, like, for me, I, I don't really mind... You know, what really, really helped me, and what I try and explain... I mean, just reading Dr. Hawkins' work, just someone at a very high level of consciousness is already doing a lot of good in the world. Mm -hmm. So I don't really feel guilt in maintaining the highest vibration I can. However, I think, you know, it depends who you're talking to. Like, for example, like this whole group is about, like, get to the highest level of consciousness. But if I'm talking to someone who's on the street, who's, like, telling me they've got kidney failure or whatever, either um, what I usually try and... I intuit whether they're open to information or not. If I feel they're intuitively, they're not open to information, for me it's like I'm not going to impose my information on them because I know that yeah. that will always go the wrong way. Yeah. You know, it's yes. like, uh, so I'll just like try and, try and just be 
silently empathetic, sort of, or silently wish them well, or bless them, mm -hmm. and leave them up to God. I hand you over to God, you know, you and, it's between you and God. Because, mm -hmm. you know, now, if, um, the other thing I think, I know this thing of coming across cold, because you're maintaining a high vibration. Uh, you know, another thing else, well, I'll share a story from Hawkins. You know, Hawkins would try and transmit spiritually his spiritual state to others. So you're like, you, you silently look into their eyes from the, from the observer or the witnesser, and usually they, on some level, not, not mentally, they start to feel like there's a bond there, and they sort of get, even though you're not necessarily telling them what to do, you're trying to transmit the silent energy to them, and they shouldn't really take it as, if you do that, they shouldn't really come back to you and say, I think you're cold and uh, cold-hearted and you don't, you don't. The other thing to do was, um, uh, I don't really do this, but you know, it is part of the, I think, course of the miracles to see Christ in everyone. I think that's very much what Mother Teresa did. You know, to see their sinlessness and their perfection, which is a silent transmission. Um, but also, on another level, so I think sometimes you can't, like, make everyone happy. So, like, if so some people are coming to you, I think, from a place where I want you to wallow in my suffering. And if you don't wallow in my suffering, then you're a bad person. And for me, it's like to detach from those type of people. It's like, okay, if you think I'm just cold-hearted because I'm not going to go down and say, poor you, poor you, for the next 20 minutes... You know, for me, it's like I'm going to maintain my vibration and wish, wish you well. But I think some people, I know some people come to me to want to throw up their, their sob story. And, uh, and for me, that's coming from a disempowered place. It's not really wanting to take responsibility. It's like, um, it, it's more like I, I, I'm in, I, I enjoy my suffering, I want to just tell everybody about my suffering all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and for me then, it's like, yeah, yeah well, I, you might like doing that and not want to get well, but I've got other things to do. It, it reminds, I mean, there is a biblical quote, where as Jesus is healing somebody, he says, pick up your bed and walk. And, and, the, <laughs> yeah. um, and, and as if saying, right, just get over yourself. I mean, that can really, like, get over yourself, get out your bloody bed. Because he's refusing to see the condition, he's refusing mm -hmm. to see the yes. illness. Yeah. It's not about seeing, so may, yes. may, he's, seeing, he's seeing the divine in the other yes. person. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's quite, in the, in the modern narrative, I mean, that was actually um, paraphrased by the psychologist Jordan Peterson, who just said, pick up your suffering and bear it. Yeah. And, and, and I think there is a dangerous thing here, not, not, necessarily harmful but there's a dangerous risk of misinterpretation because it's the difference between being a victim of something because there are plenty of injustices in this world and people really do have to struggle with certain things mm -hmm. there's a difference between that and something really horrendous happening and adopting the narrative of a victim and adopting that con that complex of mm -hmm. living yeah. as if because yeah. then the incidents themselves don't matter because there's always going to be an incident, whatever it could be. You could be exactly the same kind of victim because your shoelace has broken one time too many or something. Yeah. Mm. I think, you know, absolutely. I, you know, for me, ultimately, one's intuition guides you with each individual. Yeah. Yes. You know, sometimes you pick up, you know, I don't want to indulge in your drama. I know you, don't, you want to stay in victimhood. I'm moving on. And sometimes, intuitively, you feel to speak at their level, just at above their level, mm. to give them... Like, yeah. well, this is the next step for you. You are looking for, you know, salvation or the next level for you that you can, you can understand to take you there. And sometimes you feel intuitively like they're ready. Mm. They're ready, to, you know, for their ego to be blown off, mm. you know, and their suffering to be released. But it's an intuitive or, mm. as Hawkins say, yeah, intuitive is the right thing because each, you, know, you don't know, but you're intu sometimes the intuition guides you. Sometimes it is right. Sometimes, um, but I don't really... F Anything that drags my vibration down, I, I don't really want to do it. Mm. I think, you know, maintaining the highest vibration at all times is of great value, even if people don't like it. If I'm going to stay in the light. I'm going to be happy, joyous and free. And if you're, like, offended because you've got something going on and I don't go down to that, you know, for me it's like, well, this light is supporting me and, and, and a lot of people around the world, you see. It's not just about me and you. Mm -hmm. So like one enlightened teacher is counterbalancing like 70 million people. Mm -hmm. So if that teacher is just in front of one person and they allow their vibration to drop, 
a lot of people are going to suffer. Like if Buddha was next door, like, you know, like a thousand people who are going to commit suicide in London won't, mm -hmm. just by him being in that level of light. So if someone comes up to Buddha and says, look, I want you to cry like I'm crying because I lost my shoelaces, mm -hmm. if he drops his, just to make this one individual happy, if he, uh, if he allows his consciousness to drop, you know, may, many more are going to suffer. Yes. You know, so, you know, it's like Dr. Doc, Hugh Len. You know, I think, you know, spiritual teachers make jokes about their mothers. You know, like, if, if like, um, Buddha's mother or Dr. Hugh Len's mother saw him, like, f sitting in a room just forgiving people mm -hmm. in, in a mental hospital, or Buddha was sitting under a palm tree, like, you know, the mother said, like, get a job, or, like, <laughs> you know, like, Dr. Hugh Len, you know, what are you doing? Like, you know, go and, you know, do something useful with your life, you know, <laughs> but it's like, but actually what they're doing is, of, you know, of great, you know, it can't be seen, yes. it can't be recognised, a lot of people don't understand Buddha being in that level of consciousness, or Dr. Hugh Len, like, forgiving people and transcending the data, which, you know, people will have no comprehension. They'll say, well, these people are, like, dumb. They're not help. People need to be given sandwiches or something, you know. Like, you should be doing, that's more valuable than, you know, the work you're doing. So it's unseen. So I don't really, you know, so I, the thing of, like, you know, enlightened teachers is, like, just to know holding the highest light in myself doesn't mean that everyone's going to love you or that people are going to think you're great, you know. Uh, so... That really helped me because, you know, so it's less about like, oh, that person doesn't think I'm a great spiritual teacher or this person thinks I'm cold hearted because they had this big thing going on and I didn't sort of like start crying immediately. So, so that sounds, I mean, I know some people will disagree with what I've said, but you know, that, that's fair enough. Okay.